What is the best melee weapon in Remnant 2? The cool thing about melee, for those who didn't play the first game, is that gunfire has vastly improved how melee combat works in this sequel. You've got many more options such as Alchemist for speed, Invader for damage, and Challenger for everything. Plus, you can use Boar to deal more damage than literally any other item in the game can deal. Now, for the purposes of this video here, I tested each weapon without using the mod Boar. That is currently allowing melee weapons to hit free weak spot more times than it should, and you can even insta-kill Annihilation with it. To truly see how each weapon plays in general, I decided to try every melee weapon with no weapons or mods, and what I found was certain melee options performed far better than I expected. Unfortunately, I can't give you an exact build, because some weapons require Invader Challenger, while others require Alchemist Challenger, but it was mostly a combination of those two with melee crit and speed boosts. Let's rank every melee weapon in Remnant 2, from worst to best. As there are 40 melee weapons in this game, I've already ranked a few in the F column. As far as items that truly don't deserve any of your time at all, we've got the Rusted Claws, the Scrap Hammer, the Scrap Staff, the Scrap Hatchet, the Steel Spear, the Steel Sword, the Steel Scythe, and the Steel Katana, which is found near the Invader Armor for some odd reason, even though it's a very basic item. All of these are the lowest tier melee weapons in the game, just because you need something to start with. The first legitimate melee weapon we can talk about is the Vice Grips. This is a claw or dual wield fist weapon. The main reason I place these so low is they have no ability tied to them, are very basic, and really should not be used at all. But I do want to bring up something about them that's important going forward. All of the claw or fist type weapons in Remnant 2 have a major disadvantage. That being, they don't swing in a wide arc like a lot of the other options. And you're going to notice this if you try to use them, but your character naturally tracks towards the target a little bit. All of the other melee weapons, you just attack, and as long as you're in range, you hit, being hardly affected by this tracking at all. But the fist to cuff type weapons have this odd factor of either tracking off of the enemy too easily, or tracking too much, which makes it harder to actually hit your opponent. The vice grips look awesome, but that would be the only reason to ever run them. F tier. The Decayed Claws have a lot more crit chance than most options, but also deal much less damage. I like throwing them on if I ever am not using melee weapons, since they're small and don't really cover any area on my screen. But ultimately, they're a claw type weapon, which feel weird to use and don't perform that well overall. F tier. The Atom Smasher is the most disappointing melee option that we have. On the one hand, you find it at the end of this long and dangerous train ride, which is definitely one of the more interesting events in the game, and the ability tied to it makes the weapon swing faster after doing a charge attack. It essentially has a rocket on the back which is activated for a little bit, giving you this decent stagger hammer that can be used quickly. The best benefit here is that it does have better stagger than most of the worst weapons, but it is also dealing very poor damage overall. Swinging faster only helps if you can swing fast with damage, and we simply have many much better options, leaving a weapon I want to like down in the dirt. D tier. The Labyrinth Staff is really cool looking, has an awesome effect, would be amazing in another game, but not in this one. The Staff's main aspect is that attacks with it generate more mod power, and actually a lot of mod power. The AoE on this thing does feel fun to use as well, but it has really low damage, and let's be honest, if you're using your melee weapon to regen your mods, you're probably doing something wrong. For all gun builds, you simply run Stone of Malevolence, and for all melee builds, you use Arcane Strike, and hey, you've got some good mod regen. It's nice to have this as an option, but it just is not that good. D tier. The Gas Giant is an important item to have while also not being worth much at all. This green behemoth will apply acid when you do a neutral charge attack, but what it really does is leave a cloud behind that applies the acid to both the enemy and you. Obviously, this ain't great, but there are a few items that require you to be affected by a status to activate, so this is necessary to make those items usable, but also don't use this. You get much more acid damage on any other option with the Tainted Blade Mutator, and it's pretty slow with a very poor crit chance. D tier. Nightshade is the hardest melee weapon to get for most people, as you need to defeat the Nightweaver's alternative form, and this is a very tough fight. First off, you gotta stagger her, and then you can't get grabbed in the second phase. The Gun Monarch can make this much easier to pull off, but not getting grabbed takes a lot of practice, and your reward is kind of nice, with a claw-type weapon probably having the highest crit chance of the game, and dealing good weak spot damage bonus, until you use them, and they suck. 
Again, claw weapons don't feel very fluid to use and have no stagger at all. The neutral back dodge attack on these does grant lifesteal and give you this misty Nightweaver effect, which is the only real reason to run them so you look cool when you dodge. These actually can deal really solid crit damage, but the effort required to use them with such poor range is not worth it at all. D tier. Feral Judgment surprised me, and not in a good way. The weapon has a backdash attack that when used makes enemies build up a buff. Once that buff fully activates, Phantom Strikes attack the target many times in a quick second. With high crit and the mutator latency, this becomes super easy to activate and should deal a lot of damage, but it simply underperformed. I kinda had this built up in my head as one of the better melee weapons for its unique style and incredible crit, but that tracking problem with this melee type is far worse when using neutral back dodge attacks and you're basically only doing those with the Feral Judgment. They do deal more damage to bleeding targets, so that is something useful, but eh, this weapon type just doesn't really cut it for me. D tier. The Ritual Scythe is best used with the Shocker Mutator. You can hit multiple times, quickly charging the electrical lightning that blasts enemies from above. Sadly, that is the only use for this weapon, and the Shocker Mutator really doesn't do that much damage either, making it terrible for boss fights. As you can see here, I got it to work, but it is quite weak. The Scythe has a charge attack that hits multiple times, hence why this works well with Shocker. But the effect on it only grants you 10% more damage. It should be 10% per status, as that would be crazy strong, but only a mere 10% boost just from any element being on the enemy is nothing when other melee weapons still far outclass it. Definitely fun with Shocker, but not a good melee weapon. C tier. The Ornate Flail is a flail, which is first off a kind of an awesome idea for a melee weapon. Something that swings quickly and can be charged to spin wildly around your head. And as simple as it sounds, this is a worse weapon than the other flail option we have, which is kind of crazy. The basic steel flail is actually better than the unique Ornate that you find. This is because the Ornate has better crit chance, and so they gave it lower damage to compensate. But to use a flail to its fullest potential, you want to do something like spin it around your head indefinitely while you tank damage. And when doing that, you cannot build around crit damage and just need basic melee damage instead, which the Steel Flail does more. There are going to be some builds with this and boar that you can do to get in quick high damage. They do not beat the better boar builds and not really being worth it at all. C tier. Edge of the Forest is a Yasha-based samurai sword. It can deal very consistent crit with the Overdrive Mutator and honestly performs very well. It probably is the most middle ground melee item in the entire game. Good crit, very nice and fast attack speed, feels good to use, but does less damage than other options. I genuinely enjoy this weapon and think the different attacks you get with it make melee combat quite fun, but it is simply weaker than weapons that have special abilities tied to them. C tier. The Ornate Blade is the weapon we just talked about with a bit more crit chance. I mean, pretty much. It has the exact same bonuses and the exact same issues while dealing slightly less damage. But the crit I was able to get with this Elegant Blade felt very nice, and unfortunately the fashion it has feels a little bit better than Edge of the Forest. But they play very similar all things considered. C tier. The Red Doe Staff is awesome. I mean, really, really awesome. Aside from it being the ugliest item in the game that completely covers your character when you use it, the staff is great. With the Latency Mutator, you can charge up its ability instantly and do so with high damage. The ability summons a blue doe that deals damage and heals allies in its path, which lets you use it as a support item and a somewhat ranged melee attack. It's very unique and one of the more fun items to try and use. It is of course a staff though, which none of them deal that great damage, and you need to be up close to actually use the special ability. So it's very low utility, and how often are you really going to hit your ally with this dough? Not that effective. But I do love the idea, and I did enjoy trying to hit certain bosses with the ranged dough. I just wish it wasn't so dang ugly, man. I mean, it truly is the most hideous item to look at on the screen. C tier. The Dreamcatcher is the staff we all use to steal dreams. It gave us a couple cool moments and one of the best weapons in the game. This item is just like the last one in that latency allows you to use its ability faster, and it's a low damage staff. But the ability on this is incredible. You charge up a massive blast that gets set off applying slow to enemies hit and a buff that makes you deal more damage. This staff is incredibly fun to use in a fight like the hatchery where slow is highly beneficial. Best way to use this is to help your teammates in co-op, at least messing with targets a bit, giving you time to recover or deal free damage. But same applies to all the staffs. Very low damage, kind of covers your character a bit too much and you need to be up close to activate the ability in the first place. But if there was ever an item you should try out, then the Dreamcatcher is it. The large bubble is really beautiful to set off. It could at least provide something to your build, even if you aren't building into melee at all. C tier. 
The knuckle dusters, you might be surprised to find out, are actually really good. These are knuckle-based weapons, so that makes them instantly worse than most other options, but these ones right here are unique. You see, this weapon is designed so that you can use them with unarmed damage, or no melee weapon at all. There are several items that grant you more damage when you're hitting with an unarmed melee. These allow you to be armed and still keep those bonuses. The advantage being you get to use those rings and still keep some stat bonuses like extra crit chance. I sadly could not test this because I'm still missing that darn tarnished ring that I haven't been able to get since day one of this game's release, but ultimately it lets these be the most powerful knuckle-based weapon for a unique playstyle and overall solid damage. The no range on its attacks and not having a range attack at all are the two main weaknesses, hence why there are still many weapons more powerful than it. B tier. The Rebellion Spear is quite good. Actually, both spears in this game are amazing for two simple facts. They attack very quickly and have a lot of range, and it's as simple as that. They attack so ridiculously fast that their actual damage being lower doesn't make them that weak. They get in their hits quick and allow you to dodge exactly when you need to without the delay heavier weapons have. And range, man, the Rebellion Spear has some nice range on it that can make up for enemies dodging around. Feels like an option that would be weaker than it is, but nope, the Rebellion Spear is a nice, solid melee option to have. B tier. The Assassin's Dagger is pretty okay. I mean, its stats are low overall, but it attacks very quickly, looks very elegant, and has some cool lore around it. The cool factor comes from the fact that it deals 25% more damage to bleeding targets, and 25% more damage when attacking from behind, while also dealing bleed to enemies with charge attacks. In theory, you're going to use this with Invader's Blink skill to get behind an enemy, and now you've got 15% more damage since he's on your decoy, 85% more damage from Challenger, 50% more damage from your dagger, and then all the boost to crit from your equipment with 300% extra damage boost from your invader skill. Actually ends up being a very massive boost to the first hit coming out of blink. And since this is a really interesting way to play, it's a fun weapon. But the regular old boring attacks without all these bonuses are really bad. It has potential though, and in the right hands it can and will be a monster of damage. But we have some easier options that also still deal more damage. Beats here. The Steel Flail is good because of this fight right here in the background. You can make builds with this that spin indefinitely and never die, ultimately taking down the boss as long as your finger does not get tired. It is only good for this and nothing else, but it's extremely effective in certain fights and definitely one of the most unique ways you can beat the game. Obviously, this doesn't work on all the bosses, as some of them can fly or move too fast, but it can work in several situations, and I find it highly using spin to win b tier the royal broadsword is one of the highest damage melee weapons that doesn't have an ability tied to it this massive sword hits hard staggers and has okay crit chance which makes it a very nice option until you get the best weapons in the game yeah it is kind of slow but when you hit something you want to hit them really hard and knock them away from you the royal broadsword does this job perfectly and can be very nice in any ground-based fight b tier the Iron Greatsword is the best starting melee option. It's got really nice stats overall with great stagger, amazing reach, and high damage. You can definitely create some solid melee builds right out the gate with this guy, and it's fun to swing around as well. Its reach really can't be overstated as it's much longer than any melee weapon we have. And I truly think the more stagger that you have when you hit someone over the head, the better off you are. B tier. The Blade of Gold is probably the most lackluster item on this list, at least from the looks of things. It's a very small dagger that has low damage, small crit chance, and not much dagger at all. But it simply works. I went up against Tal Ratha with some particularly troublesome affixes for a melee build, and several weapons were just not working for me but the Blade of Goal instantly gave me the win. The really fast attack speed makes it amazing. I mean, looking at this list here, it makes no sense to rank Blade of Goal this high, but from the fight I had, I have to. The damage is solid and it made dodging really easy as I'm always getting in and getting out quickly. No, I would never think to use this weapon usually, but it might be one of the better options on random builds as it could be the most reliable dagger in the game. A tier. Ah yes, we finally got to the good old Huntress Spear, one of the most interesting melee weapons to talk about. This is actually one of the few to have a ranged attack, charge attack, and you can raise up the spear to throw it as a javelin across the map. It can deal very high damage with Invader and Challenger equipped, and its basic attack is so quick that for ground-based bosses, it is very reliable. But do not use this as a throwing melee. 
just don't do that to yourself. The animation for holding the spear up to throwing position is probably the slowest thing of all the melee options. I mean, it's truly awful. So much so that it becomes hard to dodge attacks even if you know they're coming. This is the worst ranged melee option we have, as speed is vital when it comes to bosses in particular, and even with items that boost melee speed, this animation will get you killed every single time. Truly, a terrible throwing melee. That being said, it can be thrown, which makes it a good item to have in a pinch as you can use it for melee and then chuck it if you absolutely have to. But it's not even really up for debate that this thing is really bad for throwing. They gave it almost twice the animation time as the Krell Axe, which makes it very hard to use. Ultimately, having that option though does make it better. And like I said before, spears have reach and speed, which is highly beneficial. A tier. Man, the Abyssal Hook was going to be the chosen one for melee weapons. And then they went and nerfed the darn thing. The Abyssal Hook released with the Awakened King DLC. When it came out, this weapon did more damage than any other melee option at 505 base damage. You could hit 12k weak spot damage and just bash stuff to death quickly. Sadly, this ended up being a mistake and they fixed it to do as much damage as the other big melees, just over about 300 damage, ultimately making it worse than the other three big melee options that do that damage. It does have very high stagger and on top of that an ability to gain 30% more stagger from charge attacks, so it can really mess with bosses and make them give you extra damage phases. Talratha, Red Prince, and Venom in particular are susceptible to stagger, letting you stop their attacks. Sadly, a lot of bosses are simply unaffected by stagger, so this is much less useful. Now, outside of boss fights, stagger is actually crazy good for defeating elites and mob-based enemies, which is why it really is such a good weapon, but no range attack and we still have higher damage options. So for most builds that use heavy melee weapons, you will sadly pass this really good item up. A tier. Another really surprising weapon is the Bone Chopper. This was by far the most out of nowhere discovery I had when testing each melee. The Bone Chopper is amazing because of its animation. When you use a charge attack, you're going to hit twice in this spinning motion, which that's two hits per attack and two really fast hits, I might add. The thing about melee is that stagger is somewhat skewed. All melee weapons have a stagger percentage, heavier ones have more, and lighter options have less. But all melee weapons will eventually stagger. They all do a much better job of stunning or pushing back enemies than guns ever can. And the faster you attack, the more stagger you actually get in. Which is where the bone chopper comes in. This item, while having a negative 3% stagger, can knock down things with ease. So you just charge heavy attack as fast as you can, get loads of high damage crit with the overdrive mutation, and knock things down as you do. It's a very close range weapon, but up close, you're an enraged maniac. Definitely a very amazing item for its different attack and utility. Specifically, try it with Alchemist Challenger and the Brawler's Pride Ring for a really good time. A tier. Smolder is the fire sword. It applies burning on charge attacks, and other than looking kind of cool, it sucks. In fact, if I remember correctly, the one in the first game was much more impressive. This is always a bad option with building into melee or even having something on just in case. That being said, we have to give this item its ranking based on the current state of the game. And in the current state of the game, status damage is king. With Ritualist equipped alongside burning boosting items, the burn damage is more than enough to justify this being an A tier weapon. Now, the Mutator Tainted Blade exists, meaning acid is almost always better, but for some fights, you might need something else. Specifically, Magister Delane is immune to acid, which lets the burn really shine. Outside of this one method, don't use Smolder, but with the game's current focus on status, the weapon does mop up even bosses with Ritualist and the Red Ring of Death equipped. A tier. God Splitter is an extremely underrated melee weapon. In fact, it's probably the best one in the game for ground-based bosses if you're not using Boar. You see, this item gains the ability to hit weak spots if you charge attack enemies. You know what weapons can't hit weak spots without Boar? Melee weapons. This is because most weak spots are up on the boss's head or at least in a place melee doesn't initially hit before attacking the body. Ranged options can hit weak spots, but most other options can't. God Splitter applies a buff that makes the next hit weak spot no matter where you hit them, and that's where the fun begins. Go for a high crit with the Overdrive Mutator and it just does damage. Every swing will hit big damage and on a boss like Cancer, it's almost too easy. God Splitter looks weak and feels weak when used incorrectly, but in fights where you can charge attack, charge attack, charge attack, it is absurdly powerful. Also, it's a very beautiful weapon, which definitely matters. S tier. 
The Hero Sword lives up to its name in every regard. It swings quickly, looks pristine, and has a ranged attack. You take it in any situation and know that it has your back. The charge attack sends out a wave that hits, dealing more crit than it really should. And, well, you could see the damage right there. This range attack is very powerful and easy to use. Unlike some of the other ranged melee options like the Huntress, Spear, and Krell Axe, this weapon instantly throws the wave upon a charge attack. There is no holding the weapon in position for you to let go, which which makes the attack very fluid and fast. The Hero Sword is by far the best item paired up with Deceit, as throwing out Deceit's mod is extremely efficient as the wave guides the mod towards the enemy. And there's something about this ranged attack that feels so good. It's very accurate and can hit weak spots to give you what you need in a flying robot boss fight. I'd say this is the most reliable melee weapon in the game for its versatility. It outperforms many options when it comes to damage and is far easier to use than even some of the more powerful options. Plus, it was in the first game and is sort of the classic hero weapon we all feel like we deserved. It has more meaning if you played that game and is likely more powerful in this sequel, I would imagine. S tier. Atom Splitter can deal 10,000 damage. I said, Atom Splitter can deal 10,000 damage. Do I need to go on? Atom Splitter is basically your, we have World Edge at home. It's a very long and tech-based blade that doesn't have the best stagger, but can deal good damage. The charge back dodge attack, however, is the element that you need to be using. It sends out a vertical wave that goes 20 meters. Anything in the wave's path gets hit, meaning it goes through targets. So, this has a ranged attack that can be highly effective in boss fights and dungeons. And, if you hit a weak spot with this wave, it gets arguably too much damage. The thing takes out a quarter of a boss's health in a single hit. It's incredible and gains a 25% boost to damage if you hold the attack. Now, I will bring up the fact that this is the melee weapon you can one-shot bosses with. Paired up with the mod Boar, this charged wave doesn't exactly work correctly and manages to hit Boar several times over, resulting in enough damage to kill even Annihilation in one hit. Not exactly intended, but still possible. Even without that though, this sword, as you can see here, chunks boss health, and is by far one of the most fun items to use. And when fun and high damage come together, you get one of the best options in the game. S tier. The Wrathbringer is one of the strongest melee options right out of the gate. No invader, no extra buffs, just the weapon itself. It's on par with the highest melee options and grants itself a 50% boost to melee damage after you take enough damage. This only lasts 10 seconds and no one wants to be getting hit, which isn't ideal. However, it turns out the Atonement Fold Ring, which bleeds you, grants you the max 10 stacks from this weapon 24-7, meaning your melee option just has 50% more damage all the time. So at face value, it does the most damage in the game. With 80% stagger, the weapon can crush any ground-based boss. Sadly, it has no ranged option, but it is really a beast that has more potential than most other melee weapons. I wouldn't be surprised if some people think this is the best melee weapon in the game. It's simply due to how tanky you can become and still get very high damage numbers. S tier. And here we have the strongest melee weapon in the game, Stonebreaker. This does more damage than every other melee weapon while also having a special ability that sends out a wave. This wave effectively causes the weapon to hit twice for every charge attack. So while Wrathbringer can deal more damage per hit, Stonebreaker can hit twice per hit, doubling its crit effectiveness and amount of DPS dealt. Stonebreaker with Challenger and Alchemist makes fights so fast, I imagine I'm gonna have to loop the same fight here for the footage. Bosses die instantly, and just think, this is without Boar, which would double if not triple its damage. Stonebreaker's ranged wave does go a ways, giving it some decent range, but that really is not what it's about. It can't attack flying enemies and only goes a few feet, but who cares, because when it's a ground based boss you're up against, the ground based boss dies. Weirdly, the Stonebringer has far less stagger than Wrathbringer, World's Edge, and Abyssal Hook, but as I've said before, if you're swinging fast enough, everything gets staggered anyway. So up your crit with the Overdrive Mutator and then throw on Alchemist and Challenger. Try and swing as fast as possible and it's the most powerful option, plain and simple. For those who don't know, you can shoot the mod boar on Shahala's hands when he summons them from the ground, and if you use Stonebreaker, you can deal over half his health before he moves them, or possibly even more if you time it correctly. As far as a ground-based melee option goes, Stonebreaker wins by miles. S tier. The Krell Axe is S tier. Enough said.
All right, fine. I'll talk about it if I have to. The Krell Axe is the single most versatile melee option that we have. It can be thrown, making it able to hit any enemy in the game, instantly better than over 75% of the melee options. It also applies Shock, which Shock is really nice as a status damage and can be used to gain buffs from many different trinkets. And it's currently the single strongest item in the game. During the Awakened King DLC, status was changed with the release of the Ritualist class. Sadly, this nerfed status into the ground due to status duration, messing up the damage itself. The developers corrected this and everything went back to normal with status dealing good damage regardless of its duration. Except they forgot about one small item, the Timekeeper's Jewel. If you throw this on for some reason, the extra duration doubles shock damage. Um, okay. Well, you can set up the Krell Axe to apply over 3,000 shock damage, which is going to deal that 3,000 shock damage every few seconds. And so the Krell Axe became the strongest item in the game for quite some time, and still is right now. You could throw the Krell Axe one time and delete half of the boss's health in like 15 seconds. It was, and still is, one of the most broken things in the game. Outside of this insane damage, the Krell Axe is always good. If used with the Stormbringer Mutator to boost status damage, it's always going to buff itself and can be used to regen mods faster. Plus, unlike the Hunter's Spear, it's very easy to throw and has no super sloggy pullback animation. Weirdly enough, this all makes the Krell Axe actually a bad melee weapon. As in, the melee damage isn't what's good about it, it's the shock coming from the axe that you care about. Regardless, it does always benefit every single build in some way by not being an idle item, and is one of the many aspects that ties Remnant 2 to the lore in Kronos Before the Ashes where we actually fought the Krell themselves. S tier. Spectral Blade literally attacks every single enemy on the screen at the same time. No, that isn't a joke. The Spectral Blade has a neutral dodge charge attack that creates this whirlwind spinning blade effect. Normally, it has moderate range and is just good. Well, if you throw points into the resonance trait, the range of that effect is doubled, tripled, however much is enough to go from close range to all range. This on a proper Invader Challenger crit setup with the Overdrive Mutator trivializes the game. You can even throw the mod Boar into the mix and hit two Boar for over 3k damage five times in a row 20 feet from your opponent. It's definitely one of the best ways to defeat Venom who is the hardest boss in the game by a long shot. It hits any boss regardless if they can fly or not and it's just got ease of use. You throw on the bisected ring or quilted heart for the infinite stamina and neutral dodge melee until everything is dead. Not to mention this attack also staggers enemies back keeping them from stopping your overpowered attack. This melee weapon is able to create melee builds that are two times better than range builds. That's insane insane when you really think about it, and there really is no downside. As long as you have resonance, then you have the game's easy mode. Try this method in co-op, and yeah, your whole team can attack anything, anywhere, anytime. Spectra Blade is at the current time Remnant 2's ultimate cheat code. S tier. And to really no one's surprise, World's Edge is the number one melee weapon in Remnant 2. Sometimes the best melee weapon is the most obvious option, and that's definitely the case with our red friend here. Acquired by beating the game on Apocalypse, you're appropriately awarded the strongest melee item. World's Edge is on par with the highest damage melee weapons, is on par with the highest stagger for melee weapons, and has a ranged attack that hits through walls. That alone is enough to put this at the very top. You can hit high damage against enemies' weak spots from several feet away. You can stagger enemies and attack entire groups in a single swing. You can stand at a corner and hit things through the wall until they die, making it safe to come out of hiding. If you want a ranged melee that's going to consistently work, you have to pick this item. Overdrive as a mutator and challenger work every time with both Alchemist and Invader being very solid options to run alongside it. Or after the Waking King DLC, you can go full Acidic Berserker and run the Mutator Tainted Blade with Ritualist, allowing you to apply extremely high acid damage to enemies at range and then deal thousands of damage from that just being on the enemy. A weapon that can attack every boss in the game for high damage is simply better than weapons that do more damage because they can't hit some bosses. I feel like this item deserves more from me, but I don't really have anything else to say. World's Edge is by far the easiest melee weapon to use that puts out high damage and always works. S tier. And there you have every melee weapon in Remnant 2 ranked from worst to best. A few of these are really hard to place as several of the mid-tier weapons aren't really that much better than one another. But I do think after trying every melee option in the game, 
this is what I'm gonna stick with. The top five are pretty much the only melee weapons people use on a regular basis. As with melee, it really just comes down to how much melee damage can you do, and can you attack flying bosses? If the answer is yes to both, you're one of the better melee weapons. And yeah, as you could see, even without the boar mod or any mods at all, you can beat all the bosses in the game with just a melee. Some are harder than others, of course, but it's always an option. Don't sleep on melee in this game, and do try out ones like the Bone Chopper that are more fun than I would have expected. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll catch you next time.